Hello, it's Rob here from Woodward English. How is everyone? I hope you've had a brilliant week. And yes, today we have an awesome, very, very special guest. I'm going to allow her to come on screen. Da -da. We have Della. Yes, because we're going to be talking about, um, what are we talking about today? Was it Reading. Oh, reading. Yes. I'm sorry, my memory's really terrible. So just Della, if you can just let, everyone knows I'm from New Zealand, and uh, not everyone knows where New Zealand is, but I'm from there anyway. Where are you from, Della? Of course, yeah. So I'm Della. I am from Maryland uh, in the United States of America, and I am an online English teacher, and I am passionate about teaching English through reading. <laughs> So, exactly. So today we're going to, I've got lots of different questions for Della and we're just going to learn about um, why it's quite important to have reading to help you learn to learn English. But before we begin, I just want to know where are you from? Where are you watching from? Just while we're waiting for everyone to, to turn up and everything like that, <laughs> let's have a look. And meanwhile, we've got, oh, just going up the top here, we've got Bruno, we've got him from Brazil. Who else we got? We have from, uh, if, I say, if I say your name correctly, please forgive me. So where are you watching from? Got Faisal from Libya also. We have from, where else we got? We've got Lolly, she's from France, one of our wonderful members. Um, let's keep going through here. Ooh, Burma. <laughs> we have Ecuador. Where else we got there? Let us know where you're watching from. Also, yeah, from Ecuador. Hello, everyone. Hello, Morvenis. How's it going? We got, oops, where is it? Here it is. We got from Iraq, Iran. Oh, look, hello, says Lolly. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. I was going to open up some mm -hmm. of my my banners and everything like that. Just go through here. Now we have this here. Why is it important to read in English? It might sound like an obvious question, but you'd be uh -huh. surprised. <laughs> Why is it important to read English? I mean, people are always like, oh, I just want to speak English. Yeah. Why is it important? To read it is a, it's a great question. And the thing about reading in English is that it's just one of the tools that you can use to improve your English language fluency, just one of the tools. So um, the thing about reading is that the more that you read in English, it helps you with all other, other areas, other skills in English. So imagine you're reading a book, right? And it's really interesting and you wanna share what you're reading with other people. So you start up a conversation with someone else, telling them about the book, what was so interesting, what you loved. And in the same, you know, in a conversation, it's speaking and it's listening. So that's that listening piece that comes in, right? And then there are other ways to share what it is that you loved about the book, right? You can mm -hmm. share it in writing, right? So yeah. those are all the skills, reading, speaking, listening, and writing. Ah, cool. Yeah. So one of the areas that it also helps and uh, helps mm -hmm. you with is this, is with your vocabulary. So how can reading increase your vocabulary? I mean, how, how does that work? So you're exposed to words, um, you're exposed to language in books that you might hear in everyday conversations. You're exposed to expressions in books or, or other written material that you might uh, use in conversation. Um, and that's one of the ways it increases your vocabulary. You, you, you hear it, you speak it, you read it, you get multiple exposures to it through books. Ah, that's, that's one of the, 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 one of the important things is to have this, the yeah, multiple exposures, like yeah. seeing it over and over again, it helps you retain the information in your brain. It's like the advertisements on TV. You see them so many times in the end, you know, the song, what they do, what they say and everything like that. So, and this is the same with reading. It's like yeah. you see certain words, structures, phrases and everything like that. And it, and it, and it comes through. So, mm -hmm. Just so everyone knows, I've got lots of questions here. We're just going to throw some questions in there. If you have any questions too, just chuck them in the in the chat and I'll, I'll have a look too. What else we got here? So what reading strategies can you use to improve your vocabulary? Because you mentioned like, yeah, vocabulary, you can be learned through reading, but how? what strategies can you use? 
Yeah, there are a whole bunch of strategies that you can use. So for me, I was talking about this the other day is taking notes while I read. Um, we've got thunder here. I hope you didn't. <laughs> oh, that was cool. It's a, it's a bit of a rainstorm. So um, it's really important to practice the things that good readers do. Uh, when they what are, are they, what is that? What are the good things? Gone, gone. So one of the things is, like I said, like taking notes, um, being able to um, also just kind of figure out unfamiliar ideas or words. Yeah. Um, with like, it's not really a guess. It's more of like an educated guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's important to know that you don't have to know every single thing. You don't have to know every single word in the text. You have to be able to understand the general, the big ideas when you're reading. That happens um, with native speakers too, because like, even like I speak English, you know, just a little. Yeah. But even when I'm reading books, sometimes there's something that's just like, oh, wow. It's like, what is that? And again, yeah. you have to, it's just from the context. Yeah. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Learning from context. And then an another thing that kind of stops people is the background knowledge. You know, you can pick up a book about history and, mm -hmm. you know, you can learn some things, but there's some other things that you may not know that you have to tap into when you're reading uh, in English. And then just also knowing how to choose the right book for you is really important. Okay. So Okay, this is a great question here. So what type of books should I read? I mean... Yeah. What are you interested in? That's the question that you need to start and ask yourself. What mm -hmm. interests you? Um, so like for me right now, I am really interested in um, emotions and emotional development and mm -hmm. psychology. Yeah. So that's what I'm reading. And I'm not only just reading books. I'm looking at articles and magazines and all kinds of materials. So you don't actually just need to read books. You've got a variety of different things. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, you've got the typical novels. You've got the magazines. You've got everything. Mm -hmm. You've got internet, too. You can learn so much on the internet. Websites. Literacy is very expansive. It's not just, you know, the, the, the traditional paper, you know, book. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Anyway, oh, here's another one for you. Uh, so what happens? What should you do when you don't understand a word in English? You're just reading along. It's like, oh, God, mm -hmm. what is that? What should don't you panic. do? Ignore it? <laughs> I, I just like, oh, I don't know. I, I'm just going to ignore it. No? <laughs> what you do is you first take a deep breath and you don't panic. Me, I am an English speaker. English is my first language. Mm -hmm. I often read books and I don't know what the word is. What do I do? I try and get the big idea. I try and get the, the main idea, the big ideas that are in, you know, with the words surrounding it, instead of just getting stuck on that one single word. Because oftentimes if you just go word by word by word by word, and you just try and like, maybe like translate it, from your language into English, it doesn't make sense. So it's mm. about really trying to understand the big picture and the big ideas. Now, if it really bothers you, <laughs> yeah. if it really, really, really bothers you and you have like when to your eye starts twitching like this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you can go ahead. <laughs> you can go ahead and you can get a dictionary. <laughs> yeah. That's can ask for help. Uh, okay. <laughs> but I, I, I would encourage you to try and see um, the bigger picture, um, the ideas of what the author is trying to convey. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should you write actually write notes while you're reading? It's like if there's like it's something you don't understand or making note, is that connected with this or is that just something completely different? Yes, I think you should. So for me, when I read, I it's not about like this is what this said. It's I also make notes on what it made me think about, you know, I also, it's like a journal almost like you're journaling your own, what ideas popped into my head? What was interesting about that? So it's not only about like, that's what that said. I mm -hmm. will write, you know, exactly what that said in my, um, in my margins or on my, my, my writing um, journal. Right. So I, I find it really helpful to make notes. I actually will circle, if there's a word that I didn't know, you know, I will circle it and then I'll come back to it later after I've understood the book, the big picture, 
you know, mm, or maybe yeah. like a word study at a later point. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So what about the, why should you take breaks while you're reading? Like some people, they're like just, they got a book and they'll just sit there and read it like over 24 hours without even having to go to the toilet or eating or anything like that. <laughs> or what is it about taking breaks while you're reading? Um, I, for me, I find it enjoyable. Uh, I think it's also about reading at your own pace. So I take breaks when I'm reading to let my brain kind of process it, you know, like imagine Harry Potter, you know, one of the Harry Potter books, a lot is happening. So if you just read through that entire book, your brain is going <laughs> to be like frazzled, you know, <laughs> trying to keep characters and settings and action all together. Take a break. You don't have to, you don't have to bulldoze through the text I find it helpful for me that's just the way that my brain works <laughs> okay so you, so you mentioned Harry Potter as, as yeah. one of the books that you could decide to read and everything like that mm -hmm. should English readers learn sh or read sorry mm -hmm. Shakespeare why why yes or why not okay so I think <laughs> that, so here's my thought on this if you are at an advanced level, if you feel like you've got like a really good command of English and maybe you're interested in theater, or you're interested in, in, in plays, right? The arts mm -hmm. in that way, then it could mm -hmm. be an interesting thing to check out. If mm -hmm. you are at um, maybe an intermediate level or so, you could look at a guided reader for Shakespeare, mm. so that you could get the story. You could watch the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, which I loved growing up. <laughs> <laughs> which also actually uses, that also uses um, the language of the time, you know? Yeah. Um, so that that is a bit challenging, but the imagery, you know, and Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah, like with, with the, yeah. With, with the English language, I mean, so much of the English language, not so much, but a part of the we, of the language that we use every day has actually come from Shakespeare, like the green-eyed monster and things mm -hmm. like that. It's like, it's come from there. But at the same time, it's like, it's it can be quite difficult even for native speakers. So if you, yeah. he, like you always assume, oh, Shakespeare is the number one thing to be able to read. For native speakers, don't worry. It is incredibly difficult. I mean, they teach it at high school here. And even then it can be a little difficult. You've got um, some of the, 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 the versions where you've got the notes on the side, they can help too. Yeah. But if you don't, it's like in Spanish, you have um, Don Quixote, which is like a classic book from... Mm -hmm. A long time ago the language is completely different i don't know if any brazilians here if they've got like a book like that you got shakespeare all of his plays in english you got don quixote in, in spanish any of the brazilian guys in portuguese have you got anything like that just let us know in the comments because i'm just curious i couldn't think of anything <laughs> yeah i i was, so, thinking, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was thinking of another book um the great gatsby is another ah, book yes that i've yes. Actually taught that book before to English um, students, English learners. And that one, it's just having to kind of pinpoint like, oh yeah, we don't use that language. <laughs> exactly. Anymore, you know? So it's, it's, it's fascinating just how language changes over time too. Mm -hmm. Even like that was last century, of course, last mm -hmm. century. Yeah, it was last century. century. The 1920s. <laughs> yeah, 1920s, exactly. Yeah. Which is a century ago, just thinking about it. I always think like, oh, it's just like mm -hmm. yeah, a few decades ago. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, another type of, book young adult fiction what is young adult fiction is it any what, what is it it's my favorite genre of reading um so yeah. basically young adult fiction for it to be considered young adult fiction it's a book that features a character between the ages of about 13 and 20 years old right yeah so the characters kind of it's based just basically on their on that age range, but mm -hmm. they go through um, you know they they go through first loves and and jobs and family struggles. So it goes through kind of all the same things that you would find in like an adult novel, mm -hmm. but oftentimes not always. Oftentimes you might find them shorter in length, and then mm -hmm. you might also find their language um, to be more contemporary. Um, yeah. 
so the language that people would use nowadays. And maybe even you might find a bit more slang and whatnot in it, depending on the book. But I actually, I enjoy that. And I, I find too that a lot of young adult fiction is written by like, you know, adult <laughs> women of a certain age like myself. <laughs> so so I, sh I should be reading like very old adult fiction maybe. <laughs> no, but you got the young adult. Actually, there's, yeah. There's a lot of um, young adult fiction that I've read too that I've enjoyed. That I've, I continued when I was younger. Oh, yeah. I'm still young. Yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, um, there's books from when I was a teenager that I read, and they're like my what do you call them? My comfort books mm -hmm. that I like to read, and it's just and they those are aimed at the young adult fiction. Yeah. Okay. For everyone in the chat, uh, also for Della, but we're just gonna have a look in the chat. I have a question for you. We have this here, don't judge a book by its cover. What does it mean? Have you got something like that similar in your language? I'm just going to go have a quick look through the, through the comments here, just very quickly. I'm going to see. Um, oh, from Vietnam, uh, because the language is science, Brazil, medicine, Dominican Republic, Vietnam. So just waiting for people to write their comments. Don't judge a book by its cover. Can someone please ex explain that? Hi, hello, Jorge from Chile. We've got lots of people here today. We've got hello, Rod. hello, are there? How's it going? We also have Della here too. We've got from Salta in Argentina. Ooh, this is a good thing. While we're waiting for other people to answer, what is skimming and scanning? Ah, yes. That's a technique that um, is, is quite often used in reading. It's a reading strategy that they use. I find it more used in, um, in like higher learning in like universities and college and test prep. Especially um, test I, prep. Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking, you're skimming um, for specific you know, details. You're scanning for specific details in the text. That'll help you to answer a question at the end of the text for like the IELTS or the TOEFL. So those are really important skills for that. But I am really passionate about building reading for enjoyment. <laughs> exactly. So, and you know, if you, if you have fun doing that, you know, go ahead. <laughs> Lollies, yeah, definitely the skimming and scanning, you need it. I know definitely in the IELTS because you have to teach a lot of IELTS. And it's like you don't have time to read the entire text. You have to just get the broad overview and then you return back to the text when you need to fine tune what the question or to, how to answer the question and everything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lolly says, I'm interested in books about psychology and history. Cool. Nice. I love history. I, lo oh, I love history too. I can read books. <laughs> About all time periods from the Romans, medi medieval times, Renaissance times. Um, oh, I'm so into Agatha, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Agatha Christie stories. Mysteries, yeah. Um, what else we got there? Um, got saying hello from Canada. Oh, what's this one here? It says, well, I'm started reading to love your free friends. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Who, who wrote that? Let us know who wrote that. Yeah. I've got books about history and geography. I'm interested in medicine also. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just make sure it's appropriate to put on the screen. Um, <laughs> I, what I have to do when I don't get it, get something. Can look for the meaning in my mother language or I have to look for the meaning in English and try to understand the meaning. My level is B1, like an intermediate-ish level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good strategy. Um, you know, if you don't, you know, if you can get the book in your language and read it as well as in English, that can help you. So you can always rely and go back to your language to help you understand um, if it's really difficult for you to understand in English. Yeah. See, see, I read very easy books. If it's too complicated, I get bored and I leave the book. Mm -hmm. What happens? What do you think if a book is boring. What do you recommend? Like just continue fighting until you've to finish it. So here, this is this is the, what happens if I, I find a book boring? Should I finish it anyway? Or anything? Life, life is too short. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to read yeah, a book like... that you do not like. Don't suffer through reading a book 
that you find boring unless you want to go to sleep <laughs> yeah if you if you want to just go to your sleep at night just like yeah there you go helps it instead of having pills or anything like that yeah. or alcohol, just get rid of boring boy but yeah like what they said is so true it's like life is too short it's like do things that are you know that, that make you happy if a book's yeah. boring it's like oh just yeah yeah rid of it, basically <laughs> what else to go there oh someone else agrees with with helen mm-hmm. um it's a brilliant topic uh, comprehend oh, thanks mm-hmm. oh in argentina you got martin fierro oh that's the author is that the author that's, that's the author that's like the, the classic writer is it from from oh, argentina how long ago did he write it's been interesting um got skinning and scamming got guatemala paraguay aha thank you juan ignacio don't judge people by the little you know about them and the same with books maybe Yes. I think about, you know, sometimes you'll see a book with a really beautiful illustration or picture on the cover and Mm -hmm. then you open it up and it's not so interesting on the inside. (laughs) Yeah. But it's a metaphor for life too. So So thank you, Juan. That's exactly. Don't judge a book by its cover means it could be like amazing artwork, incredible design. Mm -hmm. You've got the things that just draws your attention and then you get to the book and it's like, oh God. Again, if you don't, you're not interested, you don't have to continue. Yeah. Life's too always too short. <laughs> oh, thank you, Adelaide there. Much appreciated. <laughs> Very good conversation. Um, oh, I have some other questions before I go back to the comments. Um, oh, is reading a lonely way to learn English? I'm just here by myself with a book. <laughs> what do I it's like? I don't know. Friend. I just... You know, it does not have to be. It does not have to be. I am a big believer that you can make reading a social activity, especially Uh, mm -hmm, you have to share what you're reading with other people. You know, I tell my husband, I tell my kids, oh, that was something really funny that I read. And I'll tell them so I can share it with them. So it's not so that they might be interested in picking up, picking up the book, too. So it doesn't have to be alone. You can join a book club. You can start your own book club right there's so many things that you what wait 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 wait, wait. what's a book club what is that ah yes a book club is one of my favorite things it is a place it could be a physical place like your library or it could be a virtual online space like a zoom classroom um in which you get together with a book that everyone has is reading together mm-hmm. that's really and together they can discuss it um yes and just like just get together meet talk about the book with a group of people so, who are also reading so the same thing in the context of learning english how can a book club help well you're making it social you know and mm-hmm. i think doing learning with other people is going to help you you have to kind oh, of get out so of your head fun. Yes. Yes. You have to get out of your head and into the world. You're forced to talk about the book with others and not forced. It it should be something that you want to do. It should be what you want Mm -hmm. to do. Um, But it helps you to get out of your head and into the world and do more with your English than just kind of passively sit back and just kind of hope, you know, you, you pick up the language. You have to do things to improve in your English. Just so people know, Della has a book club. So mm-hmm. I've actually got a link to the, the to her website. You can find it on there. Yep. Easy link. Copy that. You can watch it's this later and method. make a note. Not right now because you can talk to us right now. Yep. But yes, <laughs> it's there for you to check out later. Make a note of it. She's got a yeah. book club where you can just participate and everything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. One second. Oops. This is, this is what happens. Sometimes I click buttons that I shouldn't click. <laughs> I, 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 just, I do the same. So, yeah. Yeah, my book club is starting in fall. So mm-hmm. if, you know, not right now, but, you know, if you're interested in September, we're going to start a book. We're going to start my book club. So and it's, it's just all in starting. the Northern Hemisphere. So mm-hmm. September. Yes. Okay, cool. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we're on our way to spring and summer. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, okay, so one second. Here's, a, here's an interesting question. Does reading English out loud help? Okay. So this is a tricky question. So 
if you want to work on your fluency, if you want to work on your speaking skills, then it does help, you know, to hear you kind of say the word and say it correctly, right? Mm -hmm. However, if you're trying to increase your literacy and your reading skills, I think it could be distracting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it could be distracting. So I think you want to practice those, you know, reading strategies to help you become a stronger reader. Mm -hmm. And reading and, and saying it out loud can stop you up if you're just like, oh, that didn't sound right, or I don't know how that is. So you really want to kind of get into the practice, I think, of giving yourself the space to read in, read in English. Yeah, because sometimes you probably like focus too much on your pronunciation. You're like, mm -hmm. did I say that right? And mm -hmm. oh, was it supposed to be another way? Is it Wednesday or Wednesday or mm -hmm. Wednesday? Oh, how do I say that? And then you're like, then you forget what the actual story or the the, the, the book's about. So, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it, yeah, it can sometimes help you get accustomed or the, uh, sorry, the, 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 the trust in yourself to actually try and speak outside of your own head. Because a lot yeah. of people just like they have that um, insecurity of like speaking out loud. Yeah. So it could yeah. be one way, but at the same time, yeah, it all depends on each person. Yeah. If you're into it, go for it. Mm -hmm. <gasps> books, reading books, mm. or audio books. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, first, what is what are audio books? So that's just like I don't know. We have Amazon Audible, so that is just the book being read to you, and you're listening to it, you know, on earphones or you know, over your audio device. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's the physical book. So here's what I would say about this. Um, it The preference is dependent on your brain and how your brain kind of works. Um, uh -huh. And I would also say that the, the reading strategies, this is what I've, I've read from the research shows, yeah. reading strategies that you use for reading books, a physical book, and for listening to books is similar. You're using those same reading strategies in your brain, right? For the most part. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, that's how it's, I guess that's how it's similar. Um, but again, like it depends on your personal preference. I have a preference. Yeah, does it help <laughs> doing both at the same time? Again, for me, when, especially if I'm reading something that is nonfiction or if I have to read something, you know, like really technical science research related, it helps my brain, right, to read the text and listen at the same time. But that's mm. you. But if um, but if I'm doing but but for other people, they get too distracted. So it really depends. You, you should try it and see mm -hmm. if you're like, oh, I like this. Or if you're like, there's too much going on. <laughs> I'm having yeah. sensory overload. You know, too many things are happening in my senses. So it yeah. depends on you. You have to try it out though. Okay, one second. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. find something here. Oh, I've gone and lost it. Anyway, go back. Yeah. So I guess I have never honestly, listened to an audio book but at the same time i can imagine like if you're going on a long drive for a number of hours it could be interesting to have it there mm -hmm. like yeah while you're driving like i like my music of course mm -hmm. but at the same time it could be interesting or like if you're sitting on the bus the subway or something like that that could also be interesting yeah uh, but personally I, I just love the the smell mm -hmm. of books and the physical because you have those other ones you've got digital readers and things like that yeah. mm -hmm. like, like, a, kindle. like the, the kindle and things but I'm I'm, I'm 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 old school i'm one of those old people <laughs> <laughs> i'm an old person you know me and it's like yeah i i love paperbacks and everything yeah. like that yeah i got some questions for everyone in the chat here's one when do you like to read when do you like to read Della? when do you like to read I, okay, so honestly, when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep, I will read um, in my Kindle. <laughs> really? It helps me go back to sleep. Or I'll put on my audiobook. I'll put on my audiobook for about maybe 15 minutes yeah. of story time or reading time. So that's what I'll do to help me fall back to sleep. That's one of my. You, but what happens if you get to an exciting part in the book? You're like, oh, or at the end of the chapter, I'll, typical. I'll at the end of the it. chapter, <laughs> at the end of the chapter, it's got the most exciting part. It's like, oh, I want to yeah, read the yeah. next chapter, and it's like, and then you're like, 
<laughs> I'll, I'll extend it. Seven o'clock in the morning. I've got to get up now. <laughs> it has happened to me that I have fallen asleep and I've ended up, you know, it, I've woken up and it's been like the end and I have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it's not one of those old school tapes. You've got to rewind yeah. or anything like that. <laughs> no, That's no, all right. But no. with the, like with the Kindle or those, mm -hmm. uh, those devices, what about the light? Doesn't that affect you? Mm -hmm. Like if you read it in the middle of the night at all or? I or, was, uh, I have gotten a lot better about turning on my lamp. Um, ah. So I, a lot of times I'm, I'm a mom and I'm, I'm woken up by my child. So I'll go and then I'm like, well, I'm up. <laughs> yeah, might as well. <laughs> Let me just read myself back to sleep. Um, so, yeah. I will say one more thing too that I want to add. Um, I really like when you're reading an audiobook, you can also take notes. You can oh, bookmark. Really? Mm -hmm. You can bookmark it on the yeah. apps usually, and okay. you're able to also like, oh, let me just make a quick note about this important thing. So I also take notes in my audiobooks. Oh, that's interesting. Didn't know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I just like yeah, I got my own book. Oh, I was, think, I was just thinking about because you mentioned the bookmark. You can you can bookmark things in a, in an audio book. Mm -hmm. But what do you do with like a physical book? Mm -hmm. Are you one of those people that? folds the corner or do you put a bookmark or what do you do <laughs> well, i do i i do not i do write in my books but i don't like to fold them i want them to be to be to last for as long as possible so i will take post-it notes i'll take scraps of paper mail <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what I, or receipts from whatever receipts from the from the pharmacy from or the hotel, motel, store. or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll slide those in the book. I don't. I'm not a big. I don't like to do that too much. I want to. Oh keep God, I'm so glad you said that. Okay, okay. Saying hello to Andre there. Uh, eventually, he's going to be coming up on the screen on on live with us one of these times. Mm -hmm. More about that later. We have Jorge from Chile. Hi to everyone. Nice guest, Rob. <laughs> yes, she's wonderful. Uh, what if there's a movie or series based on a book? Would you recommend watch the movie first and read the book afterwards, or vice versa? <gasps> oh, that's actually a good question. It and again, it depends. It depends. So for me. For me, I'm going to try to read the book first, right? However, mm -hmm. um, Sandman is a new, um, uh, I think it's a movie or a TV show. Something coming uh, up soon, yeah. Based on the Neil Gaiman um, novel. I don't have the book yet. I might watch it first. <laughs> yeah, it's, that, that's a great question, Vorky, because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, let's just go back in time a little bit mm -hmm. to Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's that's like, a lot of <laughs> it's just yeah that, that's a lot of reading and it's like the, it got to a point where mm -hmm. for example the series finished and then no one in the world knew what was going to happen mm -hmm. but there are certain scenes in game of thrones where the people that read the book mm -hmm. it's just like oh this is going to happen i'm going to video these guys reactions because <laughs> you know what's going to happen i watched the, the same time. <laughs> yeah and it was just like Mm -hmm. uh, for example, for me, if I could, I would read the book because the mm -hmm. book gives so much more information, so mm -hmm. much more detail and yeah. description of the what they're thinking that they can't actually show on on screen, mm -hmm. like in such a short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, you got the Game of Thrones series, which like went on and on, which is brilliant. But at the same brilliant. time. The books are also like you can use it to hold up houses type thing. <laughs> I, I I don't love I'm I, I love to teach reading, but I don't love a long book. I, I yeah. don't like if I if it's something that's massive and it doesn't fit in my handbag, like a very large text. Too uh, big. <laughs> mm -hmm. It says I love I love book clubs, Yolit. Hello, Yolit. <laughs> Get us there. Um, well, if you just check, back, I would like to sign up for an English club mm -hmm. or the book club. Della has mm -hmm. one to go. You can check it out and then afterwards in the repetition. I'll put actually the link's going to be in the description. Okay. That's not already there. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, hello from Argentina. I'm just trying to check any more other questions from here. You've never read the audio book, nor have I. I've like I've heard mm -hmm. of them, but I've never actually done it. I've always mm -hmm. yeah, just read. Like if I'm sitting on the bus or something like that, I'll just have a, like an oh another book. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, oh, 100 Years yes. of Solitude. Amazing She's writer. A writer from Colombia. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. Uh, Wagnerok. I read yeah. in the morning rather than at night. Okay. Is mm-hmm. that before breakfast or after breakfast? Or, or... That's interesting. For, mm-hmm. for example, with me, I love reading at night mm-hmm. in bed. But lately, I'm sort of distracted by series. But anyway, that's another yeah. thing. But general, <laughs> it's just like reading in, in bed at night, especially if it's raining. It's like, ah, oh, so, yeah. so good. Yeah. 30 minutes before breakfast and about half an hour before I go to bed. Oh, that's like brilliant, that. Larissa. Larissa. You don't have from... to read this once either, one time a day. You can pick multiple times a day when you have free time to, to get reading into your day. Exactly. Yeah. We've got, what other skills does really reading relate to? At yeah. the beginning, uh, Della mentioned some of these. Yeah, all of the skills. You can improve in, in your English fluency, you know, your your listening skills when you're talking about the book, your writing and rewriting and speaking skills when you're sharing the book that you're reading, something interesting in the book with other people, all areas. <laughs> Area. Is it better on the on paper or on the Kindle? I'm sorry. I'm going to just stand. I put my foot down. It's paper. Always paper. Sorry. Sorry. Let's fight. Come on. <laughs> I'll say you. I'll say you on that. Because, I, and say, because again, I don't want to, you know, I like you're going to the beach or the pool, <laughs> you know, and like taking your Kindle is so much easier than having wet But it, it can fall into the water and then it'll disappear forever. I, I and the book falls in. <laughs> I need one of those wrist strap thingies <laughs> yeah. connected to it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They make them more waterproof nowadays, too. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. So you're on the toilet, you accidentally drop it in there. No, I won't go down that way. Sorry. Okay. This I've is a serious conversation. <laughs> is it better that I try to understand the meaning of words in context or search the specific meaning? I think we mentioned a bit about this already. Oh, uh, yep. yeah. Yeah. Mm. You want to understand words and context of everything else because there, each word has so many meanings. So it'll be really confused. It'll be really confusing. So again, if if Ooh, you're yeah. reading something and it's stuck and you're stuck on it, try and get the big idea. Yeah, like like you come across the word you don't know it. Get. I mean, that's an mm-hmm. obvious one. It's like yeah. get. You got like a million different meaning uses, and you got phrasal verbs and everything. So yeah, it can be. Yeah. Or here. If I watch a movie with English subtitles, will it improve my reading skills? I think so. It's a good way to practice. I think that's actually a good idea too. Mm-hmm. It's like having yeah. subtitles there, especially if you're learning English as a second language, just because some, like what I like in our house, we often yeah. have the, the subtitles in Spanish because okay. we speak Spanish too. Yeah. And it's just, and it's sometimes, it's like you don't, as a native English speaker, mm-hmm. it's like, what did he say? What ha- what did she say? It's like, what was that? And sometimes it even helps, like, or they like mumble something. And mumble is when you're like, blah, 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 blah. you don't speak very clearly <laughs> and you don't hear what they say. But if it's subtitles, like, ah, I know, would not have picked it up if I didn't yeah. have the English or Spanish subtitles at the bottom. It'd be just like, ah. Yeah. Um, what else is there? Okay, got some more. Got some more. Oh, there's something I actually want to show here. Oops, just about eliminated it. Look at this. <laughs> Oops, one second. Oh, now I've got to get rid of that banner down the bottom. <laughs> Sorry, filling the screen with random things. Okay, five signs that you're a book lover. I'm a book. I love books. I've always loved mm-hmm. books ever since I was like uh, 49 years old. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, since I was young. Fascinated mm-hmm. by books. Anyway, it says number one, when reading, you sometimes forget to eat. What are your thoughts on that? I do it at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I like you can do uh-huh. yeah. but that sometimes one is got sometimes guys we're gonna do like one thing at a time. It's either walk mm-hmm. or eat or read books and eat. That's just yeah. So when <laughs> reading you I can I can I'm talented. I can actually eat and read at the same time. Mm, me too. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, sometimes you get so enthralled, or and by the books, like suddenly the time disappears because yeah. yeah, it's just so cool. Your dr- okay, number two, your dreams are about book worlds, not the real world. That's happened. Yeah, <laughs> your dreams about things like books yeah. and things I've like that. About something that has happened in a book. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I like. I've never actually dreamt about anything from books at all. 
Oh, I always okay. dreamed like end the world and zombie attacks and, and yeah. just relax and things like that. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm oh, number three. Books. Mm -hmm. You love rainy days because you get to stay in and read. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many of you? How many? Does this apply to any of you in the chat? There, I love rainy days. Mm. For, and like, it's not just because you can stay in and read, just because mm. I know it's just cool. I like sunny days too. It's like mm -hmm. either or. But yeah, you can. You don't have to just read on rainy days. You can actually read when mm -hmm. it's sunny. You can go to the beach when it's lovely. You can either be in the sun sunbathing with a book or something like that, or you can be in one of those sheltered things, whatever. But it doesn't yeah. need to be just be rainy days. I agree. <laughs> Number four, your dream home includes a floor to ceiling library. Okay, floor to ceiling library. <laughs> I said that. I, a floor I, to ceiling with a ladder. I was just thinking that I needed to upgrade and get a massive bookshelf because I'm collecting a lot of books. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm in the place for them. <laughs> yeah, some, someone else here, the, the executive producer of this show, aka my wife, is <laughs> 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 like, you got so many books and it's just like, when am I going to read them all? It's like, oh, man. But it's just like you, 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 you're you on one book and you go, oh, I actually need that book too. I want that book. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So for me, having a floor-to-ceiling library, I could just imagine this whole room and, you know, those ladders that slide around. Oh, it would be a dream. It would be so nice. But anyway, <laughs> we, we can we can fantasize about this. Yes. <laughs> You all, oh, this is something we took, like Jorge mentioned a bit before. You always believe the book is better than the movie. I do love a good movie, though. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on how much detail you want to. Yeah. Well, you know what I'll say? So um, I started reading, this is the Bridgerton series. Yes, I started okay. reading that. And I... I was watching it as well before I started reading it. And I was like, well, you know, I, the way they describe the characters is just so different. Like, I think I actually enjoyed the Netflix series more so than the book. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, because I haven't... It's different. I, I, I actually haven't seen either the book or the series. Mm -hmm. The executive producer has. <laughs> <laughs> She's, yeah. She agrees, um, right? Yeah, she, she, she loved the series, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like the series? Big smile and like yeah. thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> I'd just like to thank today's sponsor, Woodwood Bookstores. You can visit anytime because we are never overbooked. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's painful. I know. I know. Okay. I've got some other things here for everyone in the chat. What's this one here? What's the best place to read for you? The beach. You like reading at the beach. The problem with this day, oh, you, you got, do you take books to the beach or the Kindle? I or take the, my Kindle or an audiobook to the beach. That is like the ultimate way to relax. Yeah. I do. yeah there's nothing else to do at the beach. You can just look mm -hmm. at other people, but it's boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what it's if for. <laughs> you just got this slap from the side. <laughs> my wife loves the beach. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, reading. That's like one of the places, but me just, I don't know, just maybe it's just something from my childhood, just reading in bed. That's like my, one of my favorite places. Mm -hmm. What else we got here? Oh, just go check some of the chats, questions. <laughs> uh, what's this here? I think by reading, you can improve your vocabulary and pronunciation, but it won't be enough to be fluent. Definitely. Yeah. It's a it more can help because yeah. you need to, to be fluent, you actually need to. To one of the things like you need to speak mm -hmm. like for example i'm fluent in many languages but i can't speak them does that yeah. count <laughs> it's about making reading a social experience exactly oh here we go i like reading in my bedroom mm -hmm. yep yeah, someone else too mm -hmm. okay let's go back so the best place for me yep there be oh this is what i was thinking before something that i do when i'm learning another language is mm -hmm. i love reading um the, 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 the basic books, books for children, oh, yeah. because the vocabulary is is so, like, I've got, like, the little prints in, like, don't know how many languages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's just interesting because, if you, especially if you already know the story, like Cinderella or Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. Yeah. And you already know what's going to, you know that the wolf's going to eat everyone and no, whatever <laughs> happens in that book. But you know what's going to happen, basically. 
And so while you're trying like trying to learn the language, mm-hmm. even though it's for kids, it's a great way because it's focused in the essential words you need, the essential vocabulary, like wolf. Mm-hmm. You need to know the word wolf, like yeah. when you're walking down the street. <laughs> but I mean other words other than than wolf or whatever. I think it's just a great way. For, it's like learn with children's books, just because mm-hmm. the sentence is shorter and everything like that. For me, when I'm learning a language, I don't know about mm-hmm. everyone else. Yeah, children's literature and like young adult fiction, it's not just for kids. And it's exactly. Not, I, I, you can still read them and get so much like enjoyment. And I think because they're all written by adults, there's a lot of things that, you know, a lot of ideas that adults get that go over the head of the kids. So there's, hey, that there's, is so true. There's books that's yeah. like, they throw things in there that are for adults only, but they just didn't, the kids, they did not get it. It's yeah. like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm so innocent. I didn't know that. And the adults are like. I get that. That's an adult <laughs> experience, you know? Exactly. Yeah. How about this one? What is one of the first books you remember reading? Okay. So one of the first books that was read to me or one of the first books that I read? Whoops. Either or, or both. Well, I'll say, I'll say, um, one of the first books that I would read were the Archie comic books. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know if you know them. Archie. It's like, it's like set in like the fifties or something like that. Yes. Yes. It was a very old comic book about a bunch of teenagers, um, in high school. And I think they never. At high school. I thought they were at a bar or something. (laughs) (laughs) Like I remember like, it was like one of those milk, what do you call them? Milk. Stand stores or something, uh, or that was another book. Eh, don't worry, yeah, don't yeah. What I Archie and Veronica. They have they also have like a TV show that, that now on like Netflix that's like based oh, really? on Archie and the Veronica. But back then, I used to read the comic books. Um, and then if I think about my dad, my dad used to read to me and he would read to me Charles Dickens, um, David Copperfield okay. <laughs> as like bedtime stories. Um, mm. So, and then I, you know, I got into Road Doll. Um, yep. Uh, Boy, I think was it? it was it was like his autobiography, which is okay. like a, a, um, a juvenile fiction, you know, young, I don't know if it was young adult, but children's literature. But I yeah. think that he's also just real, like that book talks about life (laughs) you know like it talks about adult um things that that kids have to deal with too so um i enjoy rodol and then um so many books judy bloom do you know judy bloom um i don't actually yeah she's an american author that also um writes um i guess like preteen teenage kind of fiction okay yeah. Those are some of the in New Zealand, like we're islands, we don't get anything yeah. here. We like yeah. one book every year or so. So, yeah. <laughs> like when I was uh, when I was younger, I was like, in a way, I had to thank my grandmother mm-hmm. or one of my grandmothers because she she was she actually taught um, you can say she taught English and speech yeah. and things like that, and she would actually give me books that were not for children. Oh. And it was like, I'm like 60 years old and like here, I am David or something like that. Just like heavy books about things you don't need to know when you're yeah. a kid. I don't know whether she saw potential in me or she wanted me to suffer. I'm, I'm not sure. About war and or, disease. And- <laughs> yeah, just like, you know, just people getting hurt and things like that. And it's like, yeah. Oh, very so, heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, I can't get rid of it from the screen because someone asked about your name i'll just hide that there it is there it is it appears on screen Mm -hmm. i'm della yeah so and i remember but the first series i remember were like the the hardy boy books oh yes oh the detective series the detective ones i remember those and i also remember like choose your own adventure books oh those were good (laughs) like because what these choose your own adventure books is mm. like you have a choice either uh, there's an adventure it's like you can either take the left path or mm-hmm. the right path mm-hmm. whatever and if you go left you're like you die mm-hmm. instantly <laughs> or if you go right you'll go i don't know and you live for another moment or so yeah. mm-hmm. and then you decide which page to go through so you go to yeah. page number 27 so you get a page seven you died instantly no <laughs> or page 28 mm-hmm. oh something 
happens and the story continues. And there's multiple endings to these choose your own adventures. I actually yeah. saw it online about a, like a month or so ago. It was like, oh, just by, by accident, just mm -hmm. someone mentioned a book. I remember that book. Mm -hmm. they, were really, they, were, they were really cool. So I do remember those. I remember those too. <laughs> I don't know in the state, in America, if you have um, like at school, how much they promote reading. Mm -hmm. For example, I'll give you the context. Here in New Zealand, like a lot, a lot of the primary schools and things like that, you get like a little catalog mm -hmm. and you've got the books quite really, really cheap that parents can buy for their children. And do they have that there where you are? They do. Or? I, you know, I have, I have two boys um, in primary school, elementary school in the U S and they have book fairs that are pretty yep. big. Um, the books aren't that cheap though. <laughs> Very expensive. <laughs> Yeah, they probably are. Exactly. We're, we're talking about like 20 years ago or something yeah. like that. So things may have changed. <laughs> yeah, they're very expensive, the books. But um, but yeah, they they're it's reading is really big here. Um, it's also very controversial. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> it's taught, but that is a whole other episode for another oh, day. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've already mentioned this one about Lolly mm -hmm. Swift had to read out loud, random thing. My partner, she's from Chile. That's why we've got Spanish at home. Nice. How do you teach the children to love reading, as your poster says, especially when this activity is not in your culture? Interesting. Oh. Okay. Well, could you mention your culture? I mean, I'd like to know where you're from. Carolina Quintana. Please, can you give us any tips? How do you teach your children to love reading? Don't, don't be like my grandma and give them books that are like, oh. <laughs> like for adult adults. Storytelling. Storytelling is powerful. You know, I think, so my family, our background is from West Africa and a lot of our stories weren't written down. They're, to mm. they're told orally. That is so, so thinking cool. About, yeah. So like, you know, I don't know if you know, Anansi the Spider and just like African folk tales. So oh. think about the, the stories in your family that you can just sit, turn off the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Get get all the you know the, the 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 devices that the kids are playing with. Just tell yeah, just, just just connect the internet. That's the easiest thing. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, they'll like hyperventilate for about a like two or three minutes, but yeah. they'll get over it. But that's that's it. You know, people, and I think that's the important connection to make is that you know one of the questions was like, how am I going to learn how to speak from reading? That's where it came from. People have stories in their head, right, and then they want to share that with other people. So yeah, you, you, that's, that's, that's a part of literacy, sharing those stories, even though it might not be written in a book and you might not be reading it, but that's a way to do it. If it's not something, maybe you don't have a, a library in your city, you have to go too, you know, really far away to go to the library, but mm -hmm. tell those stories in your family, you know, listen to your, 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 you know, your elders, the grandparents, they have stories. Oh, I <laughs> love hearing those yeah. types of stories. Stories are they're great. Yeah. I love yeah. hearing the family stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, there's a, another question here. It's like on the same thing. What's the best way to make kids love to read better than playing with their phone? Just turn the <laughs> internet off. As I said, it just yes. it works a charm. It's a charm. I remember, days. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember like I used to read to my kids when they were younger, mm -hmm. but as soon as they turned one month old, I stopped. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, read, I try and read to my children. I've all, you know, um, the children's books, but I would say, let them choose, let them read about the things they like. My son likes Mario. I'll mm. go to the library. We will get all the books on Mario. Mario and Legos and, you know, Thomas the Train, train yeah. books. Because there are books about all of these typical series that, yeah. they, that they like. And it so applies was... to adults, too. You know, if you don't like, you know, to read mysteries, don't read yeah. mysteries. Okay. Uh... One second. How about this one here? Mm -hmm. Kindle has an online dictionary. So when you press the word, a definition box pops up. This feature has really helped me. Interesting. Yeah, it can. Maybe other electronic readers have that feature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know mine does too. But again, you know, you want to get the big idea because one word can have multiple meanings. And then you have to sit there and think, oh, which which meaning is it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then it and then it slows down your 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 reading. So that's a, just something to consider. But yeah, you can. That is a good helpful feature for words that really get you. This is fascinating. Herman Hesse is one of the first books I read. Yeah, he's actually 
isn't he the uh, the outward bound he he's got some he had something to do with this organization called outward bound which creates and you know helps inspire younger people and everything like that or i could be confused but it could be yeah i think that's who it is i'm not actually 100 certain there mm. uh oh one second just checking out i'll see if that was appropriate whatever <laughs> <laughs> what happened when you married someone who's a book lover and you only read from time to time? Is it oh, caused for the divorce? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, that's, that, that's a whole other topic. But, um, I, you know, I'll say that, um, what will I say about this? <laughs> it's, it's just like, yeah, whatever. I will say you that should good. read more. You mm -hmm. should read more. Yes. You should. Yeah. It, it's just going to make a difference. Look mm -hmm. at this. Anna, you're right. Telling stories about family is a great idea. We spend time with them and learn about each other. Family member. Yeah, it's like my great grandfather was always in jail. Oh, no. yeah. Other stories. There are other stories that you we want to have. pass down the stories. All true, you know, all of all of the good and the bad. <laughs> Thanks for your answers. There are rural places where children are taught to work in hard fields and jobs yeah. in the fields, and there's little support to study due to economic needs. Yeah. So that's what you don't, for, to tell stories, like books is not just about, it, books are stories, mm -hmm. and that you don't have to physically buy a book. As Della mentioned, you can tell these stories, get the imagination growing in, in the child's mind. Because when a child is in front of a TV or a screen, it's very passive. Yeah. They're just like consuming. It's like, uh, it's not no real work in the brain. But when you're telling the story, they have to imagine it. They have to create these images in their mind. And it just helps the connections in their brain just, just so much more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And probably got another, just a very quick one here. Do you have a favorite quote from a book at all? I do. I'm terrible at remembering quotes. So I had to write it down. Me too. <laughs> I actually have two quotes. I have one from awesome. Neil Gaiman, and I have one. Neil Gaiman is my favorite author, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll start with Neil Gaiman. Um, so Def Neil oh, Gaiman, sweet. Yay. Yes. Neil Gaiman says, um, fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. Ah, that's a good one. I like that. That's one. Do you want to go <laughs> with your quote? Uh, I, honestly, I did not. I was like, <laughs> I had so I, I'm like you. I was like, oh, God, I can't remember. I don't have anything. I have another one. <laughs> Are you going to give me another one. Save me, please. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> this is another one. So um, so Neil Gaiman, he does um, science fiction, I guess, kind of um, type. Um, was it science fiction, really? More like magical realism, but that's a whole yeah. other thing. Um, Anne Lamont is a poet. Um, a female, a woman poet in the United States. So she writes about like faith and she writes about um, addiction and motherhood and love, right? Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so she says, for some of us, books are important. Uh, books are as important as almost anything else on earth. What a miracle it is that out of these small, flat, rigid squares of paper, unfolds world after world after world. Worlds that sing to you, comfort and quiet or excite you. Books help us understand who we are and how we are to behave. They show us what community and friendship mean and they show us how to live and die. And that is such Lamont. an awesome one. Awesome quote that. It's, it's like, they're like, oh. I take my applause button on here, but it's like, oh, that is so, yeah. I'm, yeah. So I think also, this, both quotes just show like the power of books and how they help us, you know, grow or how they help us experience the world. Yeah. So those are two it's, of them. But they are just whole world, or sometimes they're like world worlds. It's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just whole world. You just You can just learn. I just love books. Yeah. I, just, I could just ramble on about that. Yeah. So well, I think. What, hmm? Every time you read something, look yep. for those quotes that speak to you, get a journal, make a note of it. And then... I have actually written so many quotes and so many things. I actually got, they're on my other laptop 
And I just like I clicked and was like, oh, but I always forget them. I'm the, I'm the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to write it down. I had to go and look it up. So I was like, let me look this up. It might be a good question to 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 have ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go quickly go to the comments and see if there's anything else here. Okay, perfect. So with thank you so much, so much, Della, for <laughs> joining us today giving your insights and partaking in in in, in the show it's My been pleasure. so wonderful having you here and hearing your thoughts and experiences and thanks for all of the of the questions that everyone has given us and participating in the chat we really 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 appreciate it just so everyone knows next week uh, same time same channel same day everything like that i'm gonna do a, a quiz about do versus make uh yeah same time and same channel. So one second, I just want to just hide these banners and everything like that. They're all over the place. Get rid of the other questions. Can you try and remove that other one, please? One second. Oh, no, here it is down there. So thank you, Della Martin, for joining us today. It has been such a pleasure, such a pleasure having you here. Thank you. And until next time, everyone, thank you so much for joining us and participating. And until next time, take care, stay safe, and of course, have an awesome day. <laughs>